Welcome to Build. I'm Laura Haywood, and I'm so excited because today I get to sit down with not one, but two award-winning music superstars who are both making their Broadway debuts. Jake Shears of the Scissor Sisters and Kirsten Maldonado of Pentatonix, co-star in Kinky Boots, one of Broadway's longest-running musicals, which just surpassed 2,000 performances on Broadway. Please join me in welcoming Kirsten and Jake. Yay! Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations, you guys. You've, you're just making your Broadway debuts. Thank you. And Kirsten, I know that you uh, went to school for at least a year as a, a musical theater major before dropping out to start Pentatonic. Yes. And Jake, you always thought you'd make your Broadway debut as a writer. Yeah. But here you are, starring yeah. as Charlie in Kinky Boots. How yeah. does it feel? It's amazing. It's, it's such a crazy dream come true. And I, I think both of us couldn't have asked for a better cast and a better family to, to have open their arms to us. Like, it's just so amazing. They're so incredible. The show is so fun. And um, it's just a dream come true. Going in every day, is, it, it is surreal. And uh, everybody has a laugh. It's, 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 a, it's a blast. And I, I just, I still can't believe it. And I know... I'm gonna miss it so much when it's done. You've just yeah. crossed the halfway mark. I think I'm at the run, halfway right? mark of my run now. I go until April 1st, so I, I just I'm really trying to savor every performance and just and be in the moment because it's it really is a uh, one of the highlights of my life. I'm hoping that when you step out for that final bow on April 1st, they'll go April Fools, he's staying, yeah. oh and, my gosh. and that you actually won't leave after all. Uh -huh. uh, you're so fantastic. <laughs> I want to talk to you about the role of Charlie because. Charlie is this very clean cut, sort of traditional guy, and you look like this clean cut, traditional guy, but in real life, and especially artistically, I guess, you're much more like the character of Lola. Yeah, 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 you could say that, but I, I strike a balance, you know? It's like when I perform on stage uh, with my own music and whatnot, I love to dress up. Um, I love to wear wild clothes. I love to look, uh, you know, loud, but, also, when I'm off stage, I'm very, very, I'm pretty conservative. Yeah. Um, I just, yeah, I like to put on my superhero costumes. Uh -huh. And uh, and then, yeah, just my my daily life, I'm actually a little bit more like Charlie in certain Are ways. Are you? Yeah. What do you think you have in common with him most? Um, what do I think I have in common with the most? Uh, that's a tough, that's a tough question. I think uh, maybe a little bit of his obliviousness sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, I don't know. I think he's a. I think he's a. He's a. He's a tender guy, and I. I. I, you know, I would like to think of myself as as a as a tender, nice, sweet person. You yeah. know, he kind of loses it as the show goes on, but I think he's got a really great heart, and you know, I. I should hope that that's something we've got in common. I don't feel like he loses <laughs> his tenderness. I feel like he gains some additional he skills. He gains more. He but gains he doesn't more. like stop being. A he he has guy. a he has a he really hits a low point. I think. In, in that second okay. act, you know? I'll, I'll get that. Um, Kirsten, yeah. what's your connection to Lauren? How do you feel like you guys are alike? Um, Lauren is really goofy and strange <laughs> and um, silly and doesn't know how to flirt, which is very me. <laughs> and um, I love singing History of Wrong Guys, which I joke is my autobiography <laughs> because, <laughs> but um, it's just, it's so fun. It's such a fun role and the, the humor and the comedy is just written in it. So it's just such a joy to go and, um, to go and perform it and do it. It's How do you fun. like being blonde? I love being blonde. Okay, so I was blonde for like three years and then I, I dyed my hair dark because uh -huh. my poor hair was <laughs> all gone. It was all falling out. And so, like, just as I was, like, missing it, they were like, oh, you're going to be blonde. And the blonde is so pretty. And I put mm -hmm. it in it so full and it's just so beautifully styled. And I, was just, I look at myself and I'm like, oh, I'm sad. But every, <laughs> because your actual hair can't <laughs> yeah. take the... Every time I go to the stage door, people are kind of like... Were you in the oh, show? Oh, yeah. oh, oh. And I was like, I know, I look the opposite. It's like black hair and then little cute blonde hair that I don't have. Well, you're both gorgeous. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, uh -huh. you're welcome. I'm curious to hear from both of you, your very first awareness of Kinky Boots, whether it was with the film, whether you saw or heard the music when the Broadway show started out, how long has it been in your awareness? Um, I had seen the movie with my mom just in passing. It was on TV and um, we were just flipping through the channels and we came across it and we just like so loved it. We stopped, we we're like, oh my gosh, wow. Love the movie. And then we went to go see the Broadway show in 2014. Mm -hmm. um, 
I don't know how much time was before that that we'd see the movie, but the first time I saw it was with my mom, um, with Billy Porter in 2014, mm -hmm. and it was amazing. And um, it's actually the show that I've seen the most on Broadway, not because. I was going to be in it, but just because of the show and the people that were starring in it that uh -huh. I wanted to go see. And I think what's so wonderful about this show, um, not only the, the message, but each person's different interpretation of their characters and how they portray the message. I feel like I've picked up something about the show differently with each person that's played the part each mm. time I've seen it, yeah. which is a really cool thing to do just because there is so much going on on stage as well. And what great background for you going into the show to yeah. have all those different perspectives on it. Did you go see it when Todd Recall was in it? I did. Because I know you guys have collaborated. Yes, I was so excited. I was geeking out yeah. seeing him. He, and then I saw it with Brendan as well. And your current Lola, Jay Harrison Gee, is absolutely incredible. He's amazing. Like one of the, I've seen, I think, almost every Lola, and he's one of the best. So. Every time he comes out on stage in the finale, he just looks so beautiful. I'm always like, Oh, I'm like blown away. I'm like, God, he's perfect. Wait, okay, so, so I want to hear your answer to that question too, but while we're talking about the finale, something special happened at the finale last night. You had a special guest star. It was the opening, oh. actually. Was it the opening? Yeah. I thought it was the closing The closing number. No, tell me, Tell me about it. We had uh, a very special guest. We had Flynn, who just won the Westminster Dog Show, uh, who's a, a, a beautiful uh, little Bichon Frise. Is that how you say it? I name? think so. Fri Bichon Frise? Bichon Frise. I don't Frise. Know. That looked, what would you say? I mean, he looked like the Muppetiest Muppet I've ever <laughs> Muppeted in my Muppet. Like the, he, it was, he was so <laughs> cute. I've never seen, so they announced like over the intercom, they were like, if you want to take a picture with a dog, he's stage left. And I've never seen anyone move that quickly <laughs> down the stairs. Like I thought I, I ran down the stairs, of course, but like there were already like, 10, 15 Everybody. people were already down there. I was like, how shall I get down here so fast? Like, <laughs> I hope nobody was running in their like crazy footwear. Oh no. Because uh, there are some serious boots in this show. No, no one was in costume. Wore, like half makeup. I have like half <laughs> pin curls. Like <laughs> those pictures are good. I hope you'll share them on Instagram. Your half pin curled head. There's with, a cute one. It did. There's a really cute one of us, but the, the the dog seriously didn't even look real. It looked like it had these like button eyes and was very chill <laughs> and and just I mean, so how did the dog get worked into the show? I think it's like a thing. I, yeah, I think every year for some reason oh, the, yeah? the West the winner of the Westminster <laughs> dog show comes and and makes a guest appearance. I remember one year the winner went on in um the mystery of Edwin Drood, I think. Um they actually had a dog that was part of the show and they swapped it out oh, wow. for oh, the for the winning dog. So cool. it's a yeah, it's a cool tradition. Um okay, so um Jake, let's talk about how you were first aware of Kinky Boots. I went in much more blind because I moved right before Kinky Boots went to Broadway, I had moved to Los Angeles. I'd lived in New York for almost 15 years. And um so I was kind of out of theater for a long time, just not being in the city, and I really didn't come back very much. Mm -hmm. um, so my first time seeing the show was in August, and I was well aware of the show, because, um, you know, I keep, keep up on everything, yeah. but, and some of the music, but I, I had never seen it. And so, that was after you were cast? That was when, that was when we were, you know, that was when I, I wanted to go see the show before I agreed to uh -huh. being in it. I knew it was going to be good, but I, but it was really overwhelming, actually, the first time. Seeing it, knowing that this was a possibility, I was just, I think I was just sinking lower <laughs> and lower and lower into my seat and walked out being like, I don't know if I can do that. Well, and <laughs> if you went in August, if my math is right, you were actually seeing Stark Sands, who originated the role. It was actually, right? no, it was, it was Andy Kelso, who oh, also, also, who's so been, fantastic. yeah, who'd been in there for, and it was his first night back after Brendan had just left. Oh, got it. Cool. But I was, I was, I was immediately nervous, but also really Excited. Yeah. I loved, I loved, loved, loved it. And you did a couple of weeks before Kirsten came in, mm -hmm. right? What's yeah. the dynamic like with the two of you together? It's perfect. It's, gonna it's be fun. fun. <laughs> it's <is> fun. <laughs> it's really sweet. I mean, she definitely was way more fearless than I was coming into this show. Did you feel like a veteran once there was like a new? Release? That was the other weird. That was the other weird thing is that you know you it was a it was a strange like switch of uh, you know of but you were you were just so fearless and and you know it was like you had been there the whole time. Thanks. Yeah. And, but we have we have we have we have fun on stage. Yeah. And now that now that it's it's funny people can get. I mean everybody we can sometimes crack each other up on. 
<laughs> when you're not supposed to, like you're breaking and because each other's so funny. We had a line like last, it was last week where Kirsten and I, it's like one of our, towards the end of the show. And I was like, what was your line? You asked me, why don't I call Lola again? Oh, and you were like, I can't even. I said, I, can't, I said, <laughs> I said, I've tried a dozen times. I can't even get pants to answer my calls. And I go. <laughs> and then <laughs> I also there's did, I don't know if you even caught this. Everyone else is making fun of me on stage. I came for the finale. I was just to sing. I knew you had it in you, <laughs> and I accidentally sang. I knew I had it in you. <laughs> and, and then Jay, Jay, all the angels were dying laughing because I didn't even notice. I didn't even notice that I said that. And then, and then they were like, "Oh, you had it in him, huh?" And I was like, "What? Oh. What?" And I was like, what are you talking about? And then I realized my error. Oh, man. So things, things like that happen, of course, and then yeah. it's funny. It's the joy of live theater. It's That's the why we go back theater. to see it again and again, to it see the it little. Fun. It keeps you on your toes. Totally. And I love, I love those moments where somebody goes up and forgets their lines or whatever, and you have to figure out what to do on the spot. And it's like, I, I love not being nervous about those moments anymore and just yeah. going with it and having fun. Jay is also really amazing, too, because he changes all the time. He changes really? stuff up all the time so that it's like all the reactions are always new and fun. And so that will kind of incite like a different, like, goofy reaction or anything. He's just great. I feel like that represents a really crucial moment in any actor's theatrical career is when you know the role well enough that you can start to play with it. Yeah. Um, when the lines are really in you so you can feel the feelings and have the reactions and yeah. you know, so I'm Excited. glad you guys are there yeah. you know, at that point. Yeah. <laughs> Congrats. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> um, so I'm going to step away from Kinky Boots for a minute and talk mm -hmm. about Pentatonix and yeah. Scissor Sisters and some of your other projects. Mm -hmm. um, congratulations on uh, all of the awards you have both won. Um, Pentatonix came to my, uh, you know, and I think many people's um, into our consciousness with the sing-off. Mm -hmm. um, but then you just like burst through this uh, competition show um, sort of, traditional trajectory and became worldwide global superstars. Um, what, what surprised you most about sort of going from being um, like a struggling a cappella group to being on the world's largest stages? Um, thank you for that really great intro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, wow. Um, I, I mean, I think we've always worked really, really hard because we weren't, um, like a traditional, like, oh, well, this act is going to work because it's a cappella, and that was before, like, Pitch Perfect. That was, mm -hmm. like, Glee was out, but it wasn't, like, the huge thing that it became. And um, we just had a really, really big and really hard work ethic, and that, like, propelled us forward, and we never wanted to stop. We were always meeting. We lived in the same apartment complex when we first moved to L.A., and we would, like, have rehearsals every day and be working on music, and um, I think that just shows to our shows to our success you know what i'm trying to say mm -hmm. um and uh yeah we just work really hard and we love it and um we have an amazing fan base that supports yeah. us and loves us we have and, a lot uh, of them here today yeah <laughs> i mean and that i mean and that too it's like I, you know you can be as successful as you want you can be continuously putting out music but i think like because we derive from the theater and choir community, like th those fans and those people are so supportive because that's like what we were doing. We were all in high school in choir room B arranging telephone, you know what I mean? And so, yeah. and so I think like, because of that, I think we're very, we have a great support system just in that in that community and in that family. So yeah, nobody joins also. an acapella group in order to get rich and famous. So yeah, when you well, do, and, it's like, as a result of the love you put into the project. It is so much about the group too. It's not about yourself. It's about the group and, and you propelling that forward just as theater is. It's, mm -hmm. it's you know, you have to be a an, an strong and amazing ensemble to back up everything because if you're not tight like that, then um, it doesn't do as well. Have your bandmates come to see you as Lauren and Kinky Boo? They haven't yet, but I hope they do. <laughs> I hope so too. Uh, and I want to see like an acapella cover of one of the Kinky Boots songs. Oh my gosh. <laughs> like from yeah. the, the Pentatonics. I, um, yeah, I feel like there's some, there's some fun mashup there to like cross your two worlds. Yeah, I'd yeah. be down. That'd be so fun. Awesome. <laughs> and so Jake, I want to talk to you too about the differences you found between being sort of this, I, I keep seeing Scissor Sisters described as like glam rock. Mm. And I don't know, do you, is that, do you feel good about that? I think that's the best. I think that's yeah. the closest you could come to describing uh, the band. I think we uh, kind of made our own weird concoction, but mm -hmm. I think at the heart 
uh, of Scissor Sisters. It's always been rock and roll. Mm -hmm. It's, it's like rock and roll in the vein of like Bowie and Elton John and but it's all you also get compared to ABBA and like other pop like very yeah, pop groups yeah. and, and there's then there's definitely some there's Beatles. weird electronic vibes that go you know that we've kind of gone off on wild tangents and uh, you know we've done all sorts of stuff it's a big old mixture so my experience with Scissor Sisters was you know when I was growing up people would always be when they heard my name was Laura they'd always say like oh tell Laura I love her you know like the old song and then around 2004 suddenly it was like have you heard this song have you heard this song the, the first track of your first album is called Laura. And so um, I, you know, I, it became my theme song. So. It's still one of my favorite songs. Me too. Made. Yeah, I love it. Um, and uh, and you, you guys had huge success, especially overseas mm. and then here. And, and then um, you went on to write a musical based on Tales of the City. Yeah, um, exactly. Where does that stand these days? Are we going to see it? We did it. It ran in... It ran in um, San Francisco at ACT for a whole summer, which was just wild. Getting that production up and running was so fun, especially in San Francisco, where the in, stories yeah, are the based. Yeah, the story takes place in San Francisco, and um, and then I've written a score with with Elton John, and we're developing it into a into a show. But you're I'm not really, allowed to tell us what that is. No, right? and it's it's. I'm so proud of the the music is 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 wild, and it was just. A, a really fun experience for the two of us to, we've written a lot of music before, but to go in and, and really write like a big piece together, um, I'll never forget it. Is Tales of the City still alive? We did a concert of it on Broadway last no, spring and it was so it. awesome. It was just really fun. I hope so. You know, I don't know. Musicals are just nothing but a big ball of heartbreak. Oh. <laughs> but, oh. I mean, I'm I ready. sort of want to put that on a T-shirt, but I don't know that I'd ever want to wear that T-shirt. <laughs> but I'm ready to like, I'm, you know, I'm ready. This being in this show has really, really inspired me to be, to being inside of a, of a proper hit musical. Mm -hmm. And just seeing that this, just being inside the structure of it and the, and, and see, being in the machinery of it every day, it's been really inspiring and I, I can't wait to start my next one. Yeah, good. Some of the angels who are the Lola's, uh, what do you call them? Like her band of merry minions. drag queens. Lola's <laughs> minions. <laughs> um, uh, they, some of the actors have been with the show since the very beginning. Um, how has it been to come into a show where uh, so many of the original cast members are still there. It's amazing. I mean, I, I, I just like watching them and looking up to them and seeing what they do, and they're just so, like, well-versed and so amazing. I've seen, I've had friends that have come, have seen the show and been like, is Danny, like, from London or from Northampton? I'm like, no, he's not. He's mm -hmm. just, yeah, so they're just, they're all amazing. Don, he plays Don. Um, Wait. Everyone brings so much of themselves to the characters, yeah. and so it's it's just a lot of fun. And 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 the cast is you know all those people that have been around for a while. Everyone's pretty salty and like really like they <laughs> are on stage, yeah. you know, and just fun. Like and there's there's really a camaraderie that um, that has just been lovely to be a part of. My favorite thing about the angels is that they are all so different from each other. They're doing this choreography, so clearly they're, you know, but but it doesn't look like they're supposed to be clones of each other in any way. It's almost like you can you can guess at their backstories just by the way each one flips her hair differently. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, that's one of my favorite things about this show is to like look at all, like you said, all the individuality that people are bringing yeah. to the roles. Yeah. And it is fun too because it is it is so much like it is the, this and in, this individual person is doing that because it's that person and like we'll all have like little moments of them on stage like while they're dancing or doing whatever and it's all specifically like how they just are as individuals it's so cool they're the best so one of my favorite things to talk uh, to people about especially people who have achieved very visible success um, and certainly starring in a Broadway show counts as that as does having Grammy Awards and all of the success Scissor Sisters have had um, is about uh, overcoming obstacles things that we might not have seen that in retrospect were crucial to getting you to where you are today is there anything that either or both of you can think of that happened that seemed like a setback at the time but actually ended up being a good thing I mean, a lot of things. <laughs> I feel like I feel like a lot of things. I think in in life in general, it's just a series of of setbacks that you have to learn from. Because once you learn from them, you continue. Once you learn from them, you can continue to move and grow forward. Um, I mean, 
as a group, as pentatonics, we've had as many setbacks, no's, they can't do this, they're not gonna be successful. As an individual, I've had setbacks being like, I don't think I can handle this, I don't think I'm good enough to do this, I don't think I deserve this, so I'm not even gonna try, or mm -hmm. as, a, as a solo artist, same exact yeah. thing. Um, but I, but I think it is just always about really putting yourself out there because I have that horrible habit where um, I don't like looking bad at, I don't like looking bad when mm -hmm. I'm doing things, even if I like like love doing it. Like I really want to like take a tap class because I used to tap all the time, but I like haven't made myself go do it because I was like, well, I'm embarrassed. I don't want to look bad or I don't. But then you can never get better. You can never succeed. Then you can never move forward with that. So um, I think just with anyone pursuing anything in their life, it could be music, it could, it could be whatever, just really putting yourself out there. And, um, you know, even if you fall or you get a no, you you take what you did there and you learn from it and you, and you continue moving forward with that knowledge. It's so important to look at all your situations and be like, you know what, I'm going to find the good in that situation because it brought me up in this way or it taught me this in life or in career, you know? So, um, yeah, well said. Yeah, very well said. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. You be a life coach. My book will be coming out, and I'm just gonna... <laughs> Jake, do you I'm have a do you have a like setback to turn gift from the universe? Well, yeah. I mean, I think uh, coming from this neighborhood, uh, you know, in the East Village in the early 2000s, as an out queer person and trying to, you know, make it in the music industry or try, you know trying to make music and, and, and be accessible to people, I think that was a huge challenge and seemed like a setback and seemed like it made it harder. But really, when you look back at it at retro, on retrospect, it's that authenticity that we carried with us is what made us special. Mm -hmm. And actually is one of the things that made people sit up and, and listen to us. So that's what, and then I was just, I was just thinking we performed in here in this building. Yeah, when it was Tower Records. 2004, the day of our record release in, uh, in the United States. It was summertime here and yeah, Tower Records. There was a stage set up right here in the, in the back and I'll, it was a really fun day. Right here in this room. Mm. Oh, it's all full mm -hmm. circle. <laughs> I love it. Um, we're going to take a few questions from the audience. But first, I just want to acknowledge that you both have other projects um, that are recent or upcoming. Your solo EP, Love, is so amazing. Yeah, thanks. Um, I must Thank have you. listened to it 100 times. I just, I really, really love it. And Thank I'm so you. glad that you're doing that solo work. Thanks. Um, and Jake, you have a book coming out on Tuesday. I've got a book coming out Tuesday. <laughs> um, um, it's called Boys Keep Swinging. It's on uh, on Atria. Published it with Simon and Schuster, and it's um, a memoir that kind of talks about this period that I'm was just talking about. Uh, it goes up to about 2006, and I've worked on it for the last couple of years, and it was just the wildest experience writing this book. And I am so incredibly proud of it. Um, and the response so far uh, is been overwhelming and lovely. Um, I'm really happy for it to come out. And um, yeah, and I've got my album coming out this summer. That's I've got right, my first yeah. solo record coming out this summer. Kirsten, are you working on additional solo work? I am, yes. And I am. Who can, I say, can I say, who you, can we talk about who you just talked to last week? Oh yeah, I, yeah. It was so uh, amazing. My, my songwriting partner, you know, from Scissors, Baby Daddy, calls me in the afternoon. He's like, I just met with Kirsten. And I was like, oh my God. Yeah, we were getting coffee and Jake was calling him. And I was like, you can answer it because I know Jake. Like, it's chill. It was really sweet. And that night we were on stage together. We've got a moment where we can like talk to each other. And I was like, how was your meeting with baby daddy? It was great. It was amazing. <laughs> I really hope y'all make some stuff together. He's... You know, maybe the three yeah. of us. Yeah, I always yeah. Like hey, is there going to be a collaboration with you guys? You know, he's an he's an incredible producer and songwriter, and and you know we made we made every Scissor yeah. Sisters song together. So I would love to see yeah. the two of you or the three and of us. The three of us have That'd some fun. fun together. This idea was made right here, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in. You witnessed it. Uh, let's take some questions from the audience. Hey guys, first first off, Kirsten, just want to say I'm really proud of you. I'm happy to see you're doing so well in New York. Thanks. Of course. Now, my question for the two of you, how important is it for you guys to be starring in a Broadway show that conveys messages of hope and love and acceptance of those who are different than you? Um, I mean, it's, it's incredible. It's amazing. I think um, 
Again, it's such an honor. Obviously, like I've always wanted to be on Broadway, but we both want to be a part of the theater community on Broadway. And it's just so amazing to be a part of such an incredible show. And I love I love the stories and I love the messages that it brings. I um I met someone last night that was at the stage door that had come in from Florida and um her school was the one that um had the incident yesterday and she was oh, like, geez. Thank you so much for um the show tonight, it was a really horrible day. And so it's just like, it's so beautiful and wonderful that music and theater and performances can just be doing that for people and like have such a message of hope and bring people out of that. And um, I think it's such an important message for families and just people searching for their individuality to come and see, I think it's just, it's beautiful, it's a fun, uplifting show, but it also carries that really like heavy, important message of of just acceptance just in general yeah so um yeah one of my favorite things about this show is that you know when it first came out everyone was like you're never going to get people to go see a show that has kinky in the title especially families and now it is being marketed yeah. and accepted as one of the shows to go to with your kids mm. because yeah. it is such an uplifting show about love and acceptance and truth and it, it's totally overcome, like we were talking about overcoming uh, unexpected yeah. setbacks. Um, I think that's, that's what really kind of magical about it. Yeah, exactly. And the message gets even more relevant as time goes on. You know, like it's, it's, it's great. And seeing the families there is my favorite thing about it. I think seeing families come together and uh, seeing something that they've never, you know, that they've never seen before. The show blows people's minds, you know, people coming in from all over the place and they've never seen anything like it. And it's, that's the most moving thing to me about being in the show is, is seeing people, you know, unexpectedly their minds opening. And people are falling in love with it all the time. And for a show that's been on Broadway for almost five years, that is really saying something. Yeah. yeah. Let's take another question. Hello, hello. Hi. Uh, I just wanted to say that I got to see you both on your debut night, and it was phenomenal. And my question is, what is something that you really will take back with you, especially from not just on the stage performance, but also behind the scenes and all of your prep to become Broadway stars? And like, how is that in going to influence your careers as artists? Um, I know for me, moving to New York has given me just sense such an incredible sense of purpose like even like walking around like I'm out here and I have my my two huskies out here in an apartment too so it's like I don't know I mean like this sounds silly maybe but I feel like in LA it's like so warm and beautiful and like yes the traffic's bad but it's pretty easy to live there and like in New York you know there's so many more things to figure out and um with the cold and everything like the living <laughs> conditions are just harder <laughs> um but I I keep having these like pinch me moments because I know like I my run just got extended so I'm gonna be working with other people too and like people are coming in and out of the show and it's so crazy how the dynamic changes in a like sad but beautiful way and I just like all the people that I've met so far I like love so much I like go home every day and I'm like so excited I'm gonna cry <laughs> and like I just the people that we've met out here are just so amazing and um, it's such a cool thing to be a part of. So I just feel like it's it, it's just a experience of a lifetime and I'll carry that with me forever because I just feel like it's made me like really passionate about what I'm doing and, and, and what we're saying and, and just everything about it. It's just amazing. Jake, do you feel like this experience will change how you make your art in the future? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely opened up, uh, I mean, uh, everything what she just said for one, <laughs> for one. And then, um, I think just what I've, the skill set that I've learned and the new tools that I have for, um, you know, th doing things that I was really scared of not knowing what I was doing, I now have new tools to, to move forward. So the next time, you know, I, I don't feel as frightened about getting up on stage and doing another musical. And then it's opened my mind to possibilities like, oh, what if the next musical I write is actually something that I, that I you know, writing something for myself. Yeah. Which is not anything I've ever thought about doing. So I think for me, taking those, those that just new skills um, is gonna be, I'm really excited about it. I want to like steal one of the audience questions um, and ask you whether there you could either of you could ever envision a Scissor Sisters musical or a Pentatonix musical. I mean, yeah, yeah. Sure. Yeah. 
I think so. Maybe maybe there will be a musical based on your new book that's coming out. Oh my goodness. <laughs> it, it would be X-rated. <laughs> oh yay! <laughs> it wouldn't be a family show. It's the show that starts at 11 p.m. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> It would be next door, private eyes uh, <laughs> club. You know? Maybe it'll be well, an a cappella musical, and Pentatonix can write the music. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> we'll call it Pentaton X X. We'll have to have like a yeah. Pentatonix. We'll have to have a thou- X. <laughs> I have to have a lot of swings because it'll be a cappella for two hours, and everyone will go. Well, isn't swing in the title of the book? Boys keep swinging. Yeah, yeah exactly. So there you go. Literally, boys yeah. keep swinging in and out <laughs> <Yeah>. because <laughs> their voices are All right, are let's tired. get back to the audience. <laughs> guys okay so I'm born and raised in New York City and I know that you lived in New York but moved to LA for a while and then you're from Texas and moved to LA as well so I wanted to know how has that adjustment been like being here 24 7 and then also what's your favorite part of New York City in in general because I love it here too Mm. um I love it here I think the hardest part is how dry it gets Mm. um yeah I sleep with, <laughs> I sleep, I just, I, it's, I feel like some weird person. I sleep with a mister that goes, just mists my face all night one. as I yeah. sleep. And it makes a big difference. Because now I don't sleep with the heat on. Well, I don't need it anymore because I think coming from Texas and LA, I, my body went into like, oh my God, where are we mode? <laughs> and now I run like really hot. Like my body temperature is always really warm. Like even like on stage, I'll be like, Woo, it's hot, guys. And everyone's like, it's cold in here? And I was like, no, <laughs> it is hot. So, but yeah, the dry and just like combating that with water and, and, and um, Ooh, just wait till when the humidity starts. Oof, you're going to be wishing it was dry. Oh, yeah. Uh, but I'll be gone by then. Oh. Sadly. Wah, 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 wah. Mm-hmm. That's okay. Are you guys both planning on going back to LA after uh, your runs are over? I'm going to, I've got to go, I've got to, I'm, I'm going to go back for a little while. I'm, ba- I've got to, ha- I'm based in LA and then I live part time in New Orleans. So I'm really missing New Orleans so much right now. Yeah, you just missed Mardi oh Gras. My God. I had I was having the biggest FOMO on Mardi what you know, Fat Tuesday was happening and um so I'm definitely before the summer hits in New Orleans, I need some good time there. Mm-hmm. Um but yeah, back to LA. It's made me miss New York being here in certain ways. And I the transition after being here for so long to LA was really tough and I've learned to love it and I've learned to love my life there. It's a lot quieter for me there than it is in (laughs) New York. But, uh, you know, this has made me realize that like, actually, yeah, I can come back to New York when, and, and work here and do whatever I want here. So I don't have to be stuck out in Los Angeles. I want to make sure we don't skip over the second half of her question, which was what's your favorite part of New York city? Um, I think the energy here. I was going to say I would definitely love to move out here, but I just bought a house in L.A. So Congrats. I, yeah, so I have that. I, I can't afford to the be picture, my personal yet. <laughs> the picture of you in front of the billboard that has your name on it in Times Square is, like, my favorite thing. I was crying, and I went, you know, and I was in Times Square, and people were always like, hey, 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 and you're like, no, 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 no. Like, t- not today, but I was like... I was like, hey, excuse me, excuse me. And people were, like, ignoring me because they thought I was crazy. You're like, that's me. That's my but name. But I was, like, this really sweet lady. Like, came to me and was like, are you okay? And I was like, yes, did you take a picture of me? My name is going to flash across <laughs> the screen. I was like, it's Kirsten Maldonado. I'm in kinky boots. I'm so excited. Do you mind taking a picture? And they were like, yeah. And I was like, great. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I just think the energy here is really amazing. I love, like, walking around the city and hearing people, this sounds silly maybe, I love hearing people like on business calls or people singing to themselves or just talking because they're rehearsing a scene. Like, Mm -hmm. I love that. I think that's so cool, the energy of people just like, it's like a (laughs) worker. So I just like, I've never been more inspired in a place than I am here. So I would like, that's what I love about the city. There's nothing that replaces it in the entire world. I don't care that it's cold. I don't care that it's dry. (laughs) I don't care. It's just the best, so. That's where I get all my song titles, really. From people walking down the street? You just eavesdrop on people (laughs) constantly. I'm always writing stuff down that people say. And, you know. That's That's where Let's Have a Kiki came from. Yeah, basically. It's true. (laughs) It's true. It's true. (laughs) You just overheard someone say it. Um, I know I overhear a lot. And I write write down a lot of what I hear and turn that into into music. I'll keep that in mind. I'll never Uh, talk about you. Yeah, watch that. (laughs) Because you'll overhear me. Um, and uh, <laughs> but I was gonna say my favorite part of New York is just down the street, and Joe's Pub to me represents, you know, a real heart of the city and a really vital place. And it's, you know, it's a place that I don't know. I just feel like it's the core of downtown performance, and 
um, I hope it never goes away. You know, I hope it's I hope it's here for a long, long time. Yeah, cool. I think we have time for one more question. Hi. Okay, this is working. Cool. Um, <laughs> I was just wondering how like your singing techniques have changed, like being on Broadway versus like singing, like I guess like pop music. Like, well, how like what have you done to like get like the traditional Broadway sound, or how have you changed like your voice to fit things? Um, I I feel like singing a cappella for an hour and a half on tour for five years has been so amazing and, and training me to be able to do this because everyone was like, it's eight shows a week. And I was like, yeah, but it's an hour and a half. Show. You know what I mean? Acapella is also so strenuous and so difficult. So I feel like I honestly came in like feeling really great. And what's so fun is that like Cindy's music is just so you kind of add that embellished, like kind of pop that's Fun. Cindy Lauper. Vibe, by the sorry. Way. Some of sorry. us aren't on a first name basis I with have her. I haven't met her yet. You haven't? No. Jake, have you met Cindy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A few times uh, over just over the years. And then we performed together. Um, in December for her holiday show, which was really fun. Uh, she hasn't come to the show yet, but I told people not to tell me because then I would be too nervous. I'm terrified. Because they were like, oh, is she not show. coming to see the show with you in again? And I was like, no. And they were like, oh, I'll have to let her know. I was like, don't tell me. Because I'll freak out. I'll be really nervous. So do you sing the same style? Like your voice sounds, your voice, I know you have a Northampton accent in the show. <laughs> but other than that, you use the same sort of techniques? Um, techniques? Yeah, I would say so. I feel like I, Yeah. Got it. <laughs> and Jake, yeah. how about you? Uh, my, my two main songs in the show are an absolute beast. And they are two of the hardest songs I've ever sung. And, uh, and I've just had to put my own spin on them in a way. I mean, you know, Stark Sands, I don't, his voice is so bizarre and wild. And I was really <laughs> fortunate to get to shadow him and watch, you know, because he was, I, I followed him when he was coming out of the show. So, but... They're they're really tough. I ha I have definitely had to like work on certain things, and I've just used this opportunity to, to go to a like proper vocal coach <laughs> here, and 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 that stuff is wild. It's really complicated and terrifying, and like, <laughs> I'm just like I don't know what the hell she's doing half the time, and I don't know what I'm doing half the time, but. Um, I've already noticed some, like, you know, it makes you kind of be just more aware of what's going on in your, the vibrations in your head when you're singing, you know? Yeah, cool. Well, we're out of time. You guys are both fantastic. I'm so happy that you're on stage eight times a week here in New York City. Everyone go see Kinky Boots. Yay! Huh. Go see Kinky Boots. It's the One of the go greatest shows on Broadway, one of the longest running shows on Broadway, and we have two really incredible superstars in in addition to just an entire really fantastic cast. So everyone go see it. Thanks for being here. Thanks for Thank being you. here. Thank you so much, you guys. Thank you. Much. Thank you, Laura.